Can everyone hear me? How's my connection? Am I coming through? Good. Or do I have to yeah, use yeah, my yeah. phone? Okay. So I'll be talking about the killing of odd order predators as opposed to even order predators and what those mean. Um, but to get an understanding of what it is, I'll guess I'll just start with the name of the trait. Um, so let's say we take humans, the human contact. And we have predators that have hypothetically evolved in a natural predator-prey cycle with humans, right? So we can use... Are you familiar with xenomorphs? Um, yeah, from, yeah. Yeah. So let's say, like, instead of, like, destroying everything and, like, killing all life or whatever, like, let's say they were these beings that just evolved alongside with us in a natural predator-prey cycle. And they would, like, eat humans alive and whatnot. Um... Now, say you were to, you you know, you're in a helicopter and you spot a xenomorph. And you know that in the future of the xenomorph, it's going to, you know, eat more humans alive. You have a sniper rifle. But, you know, the question is, what do you do? Um, so I'll just pose the question. So do you shoot the xenomorph? Do you let the xenomorph go? I would say, yeah, shoot the xenomorph. Yeah. Um, and now, you notice that... Here's what you probably wouldn't say, right? I mean, you pr presumably wouldn't make the following cases to not shoot the xenomorph. You know, for example, let's say I told you, well, if you shot the xenomorph, then maybe, you know, more humans would be overpopulated. And there would be some environmental harm from that. And, you know, you know, humans are, they cause the most environmental harm out of all species. Maybe we should really let the xenomorph eat the human alive. Um, maybe humans will suffer more because that human that would have been eaten by the xenomorph would contribute to overpopulation, there'll be less resources, especially if you do it in places like Africa or whatnot. You know, maybe we should let the xenomorph... Like, presumably you wouldn't really find those arguments convincing enough to not shoot the xenomorph. Sure, just because of self-preservation. Yeah. Well, not self-preservation. Let's say the xenomorph wouldn't kill you, it would just kill other humans. Okay, so potentially other people you might care about. Yeah, like let's say it was let's say it was just like this xenomorph that lived in Africa and would just kill African people. Um, presumably, you'd think it would be, you know, ethical to act in idealized self-defense of the African people. Um, I would assume so anyway, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Or let's say you didn't know any of the people, like, you know, when you say potentially people you care about, I mean, just hypothetically, let's stipulate you didn't know any of those Africans, but you well, knew that the Zeno, yeah. By care about, I meant, like, you don't necessarily have to mean them, but you have a general concern for the rest of your species. Okay. Um, all right, sure. So you, if it's species, okay, sure. But that, uh, so let's just do the question. Um, so then the question is, if you see a lion, right? Let's say you see a lion and you know the lion's going to be this evolved in this natural predator prey cycle with cape buffalo or gazelle or whatnot. You know, you're in the helicopter. Do you shoot the lion or not? What do you do? Yeah, I don't think I'd shoot the lion. All right. So then the question I'll pose to you is to name the trait. Um, okay, well, I mean, just the difference between the xenomorph and the lion is... Okay, wait, are we using, like, an actual xenomorph from the movie as the example, or the hypothetical xenomorph where it's evolved alongside humans and it's not some, like, insane apex predator that'll literally murder... Yeah, we're using the hypothetical example where, you know, this xenomorph, it looks like the xenomorph from the movie, but it's not going to destroy all life. It's going to just be in this natural predator prey cycle with humans it okay. really eats alive to the okay same so is the xenomorph as dangerous as the lion uh to the same degree that the lion is dangerous to the gazelle and the cape buffalo the xenomorph is dangerous to the um to the humans okay so it wouldn't be as dangerous to we're, we're comparing the danger to how a lion would prey upon a gazelle, not how a lion would prey upon a human. Yeah, so like to whatever degree that a lion would prey upon a gazelle is the degree to which the xenomorphs uh, would prey upon a uh, human. Let me think for a second.
Um, you know, in a situation like that, I would say, fuck, that's hard to, hmm. You know what? Um, I kind of have this position with bears. There are quite a few bear attacks. And I would say, unless it's fucking with you, leave it alone. Like, in that sort of hypothetical context where... Yeah, like, that sort of hypothetical context where lions inter... Like, or sorry, that hypothetical context where xenomorphs are preying upon humans, I would say... If it's not attacking you, just leave it alone. But if it does attack you, then, you know, obviously self-defense, self, self-preservation is fine. Wait, so let me just get, just to get this clear. So let's say, you know, I, we can look up how many, however many wildebeest or whatever gazelles are killed by lions. But we're not talking about, like, isolated bear attacks here. We're talking about things that happen, like, very regularly and frequently to the same frequency that a gazelle would be killed by a lion um so it's not like you know it's not like something that like oh it'll make headlines when it happens like no this will happen like all the fucking time um so so if there were like these xenomorphs that were going around just killing humans to the same frequency that lions were killing um gazelle you would take a look at a xenomorph and you would say leave it alone as long as it doesn't have the ability to harm you personally so, like, you're in a helicopter, it's not going to get you. But you know that, you know, in the, in the future of this xenomorph's life, it's going to eat a human alive. Okay, oh, um, do you, do you have any actual, like, data on how frequently, like, a lion would, or how, how often, like, gazelles actually die from lions? Like, what percentage of the population? Um, I don't. Uh, what I can I can make some vague inferences. I can tell you that there's um, I can tell you that you know per I can tell you that lions can hunt to X amount of times in their lifetime in order just to sustain themselves. I can say there's twenty there's about twenty thousand I think population of lions on the African lions anyway um, on the planet. Um, they live I think they live around what is it seven years or something uh, maybe a little more. They need to hunt to sustain themselves. Um, but let's just hypothetically say, just to avoid the empirical thing, I mean, we can look at, at the empirics, but I'm sure it's not going to be anywhere near, I mean, we can look this up, but I'm sure it's not going to be anywhere near, like, isolated bear killing instances. Well, yeah, I know that. Yeah, but I, so the answer is I don't. We can look at, I don't know exactly, you know, how frequently they kill a gazelle as opposed to, like, a cape Sure, sure. Like, my, like, my thing is, I'd kind of see this as sort of a threshold, like, mm-hmm. if... I don't know, like half the human population was going to be uh, preyed upon, you know, that's a pretty big deal. But if it's only, I don't know, like 1%, it's a bit different, you know what I mean? Okay, let's say it was, you know, let's say it was 1%. Let's say, let's say it was 1%, but let's say the point being is that this is the prey that this species evolved to eat. This is the prey that this species, you could almost certainly be confident that if you let this being continue to live, it's going to eat a human alive in the future. Or probably multiple humans alive. Um, now, is it going to kill you know half the human population? No, it's not. But there will be some. If you let this being live, there will be some amount of humans that is going to just consume alive in just this horrific manner. Um, so the question is, you know, what do you do with that? It's not going to kill you, but it will kill a human, probably multiple. What do you do? You, you have the sniper rifle here. You can kill it. You will save those humans. Whatever amount of humans it would eat alive, you will save them. But you will kill that being. So, I mean, what do you do? Right, and we're going by the 1% figure? Yeah, like in total, like, oh, 1% being, okay, so this, we're, we have a small, you know, we have a relatively small population of xenomorphs going around. They're, they're going to, in their entire population, kill 1% of humans by eating them alive, or, like, some some of them won't eat them alive, some of them will, like, go for their throat first and, like, kill them before they eat them alive, but for a decent amount of them, they will be eaten alive. Just the same degree that lions go in their sure. prey. You know what? If we're going to go with the 1% figure, I think that's low enough where I'd say you probably, I don't know, you probably shouldn't shoot the xenomorph. Um, like, again, 
it's it's hard to pinpoint down like an actual number where I'd be comfortable. Like one percent is low enough, but I don't know. Like seven percent is too high. I don't know if I can make a calculation that accurate, but I don't know. One percent seems low enough where ought to let it just live. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say there was um, let's say there was a mentally handicapped human that was going to eat other humans a lot. Um, and it would eat 1% of the human population alive, uh, these, these beings of mentally handicapped humans. Um, that's just what, there's something wrong with them, there's some mutation or whatever. For whatever reason, they're not agential, but whatever reason they're going to, you know, take a bunch of humans and they're going to eat them alive. And that's just what they're going to do. Um, and it's in their nature. Um, should we kill those individuals? Or should we say the same thing? That, you know, it's 1% of the human population that will be plagued by this, that we should just leave, let them be and let them, you know, eat 1% of the human population alive. Um, yeah, I, I think I'd still hold that same pos position where um, if there's some, if there's some chance that they'd end up uh, killing a human... That's fine. I, I just think... Well, that's not chance. No, we're, we're not... That's well, not yeah. what I, yeah. Okay, well, it's right. Like, I mean, there's a guarantee that they'll wipe out 1% of the population. Right. Um, yeah, I, I still think that's low enough. Let me ask you this. Let me, let me just really put it into context. Um, let's say, like, we're, on an, we're in a vacuum and we're not a hypothetical uh, island. There are... There's you and there's 100 people in this in this island okay then there's this being that is non-agential it's mentally handicapped or whatnot and it's going to eat one person alive in its in its future guaranteed you know there's a hundred people that exist it will eat one person and they will eat them alive it, do you think the right thing to do is to kill that being before it eats the one person alive or do you think the right thing to do is to let that person or let that being just eat that one person alive? Okay, I get what you're saying now. Um, all right. I think, yeah, probably in that context it would be moral. And I guess I'd have to sort of change my position a bit. I'd, I'd have to use some other sort of excuse like... Um, yeah, I think you'd have to come up with some sort of ecological excuse to, uh, like, let the xenomorph live. Or wait, wait let me think. I'm, I'm kind of mixing things up here. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if it would really... Yeah, I don't think you could really rely on... Um, per, like it being a percentage of the population, I think you'd have to rely on some sort of ecological reason. Okay. Now, the issue here would be um, with the human context, whatever ecological reason you have um, to kill, whatever ecological qualms that you would have to kill a, by killing a lion, it seems to be the case. And if someone wants to reject this, they would really have to provide strong empirics. It seems to be the case that whatever, almost any argument you can make would probably hold true, if not more true, in the xenomorph context, because humans are the most ecologically destructive species. Hmm, I see. Yeah, I'm kind of stuck. Yeah, let me think about this for a bit. Okay, you know what? It definitely couldn't be an ecological reason because then you could actually justify killing humans. And I've actually brought this up in a few debates I've had actually uh, yeah. with hunters. Yeah, you wouldn't um, be vegan if, if you're going to go with the echo. I don't see why you one would be yeah, vegan. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know what? Um, I think you'd kind of have to 
Like maybe go with a, a lower threshold than like 1% or something. Oh, where it would just impact such a minor. View. Sorry? Now we're back to the threshold view? Yeah, I don't know. I think you'd... I think that's the that's the only route I think I could possibly uh, I'm take. Gonna, well, you know what I'm gonna do. I mean, look, uh, I mean, look. Let's say you say it's 0.1 percent and not one percent, right? Now I'm gonna give you the same hypothetical. Let's say you're on an island with a thousand people. Okay. You you this one being, right? There's one being that you know some mutation happened or whatever, and for whatever reason, this being is going to you know in the future it's guaranteed that it's going to eat one human alive. There's a thousand humans in existence. It's gonna eat one of them alive. If someone decided they're going to save that one person by killing that being in advance, would you say they're moral, immoral, or amoral, or morally neutral, or whatever? Um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with it being morally neutral to not kill it, so and it possibly being damage? morally good to kill. it. Sorry? Wait, so is it more morally neutral and po okay, I just want to get clarity. So morally neutral and possibly morally good? So it would be morally neutral not to kill it and I'd have to think about it a little more, but I'd say it's possibly more morally good to kill. It. So would you say it is morally neutral to kill lions and possibly morally good to kill lions? Not sure. Let me think. Obviously. You know what? I think tackling this from like um, a utilitarian perspective will get you in like these really weird situations. Um, well, I'm not, you don't have to necessarily do it from a utilitarian perspective because, like, all, all I'm asking is for consistency. Um, just as, sure. it's just standard of the trade. You, whatever you, whether it's a deontic rights violation or whether it's a utilitarian calculus that you're doing, um, I just don't see a meaningful difference between someone who thinks it's okay to kill an idealized self defense for in the human context um, and the animal context. Like, I'll just level with what my position is. Like, my position is, you know, if I saw a lion, um, I would shoot the lion. Um, I, I think it's crazy to not do that. I think it's crazy to let a human, um, even if it was a thousand or a hundred thousand people, if I see a being and I know that that being in the future will eat another human alive, um, a human that's not, you know, the predator themselves, you know, assuming that it's hypothetical that all of those humans are herbivores and they're vegan and whatnot. I would kill that being. I don't care if there's a hundred humans in the hypothetical. I don't care if there's a thousand humans in the hypothetical. I think it's morally good. And, and you know, the only thing I'm wondering about is, is, is it an obligation or not just good uh, to kill that being? Um, and I don't see a meaningful trait that I could name in the lion, cape buffalo, or gazelle context. But if anyone else thinks there is, they, they can. Like, I don't think okay. environment is good. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, you know what? Um, I just thought of this. I'd say possibly moral agency uh, okay, might play okay, so, a role here. Yeah, so that's that's a very easy. Okay, so let me ask you this. So let's say the being well, moral agency would be a category error because I've actually specified in the hypothetical that it was non-agential. So let's say there was a mentally handicapped human, right? That wasn't an agent, and let's say that mentally handicapped human, you knew that they're going to eat another human alive in the future. And the only way to stop it, hypothetically, is to kill that mentally handicapped human. Is it morally right, morally wrong, or morally neutral to prevent that eating alive of another human by this mentally handicapped human? Okay, um... I see there, okay, so I see there being, let me, okay, I, I really have to think about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it's not, this is not an easy one. Um, it's not an easy one because we are very culturally conditioned that, you know, there's so, so many things we've been conditioned into. Uh, one thing we've been conditioned into is that, you know, if something happens in nature, it's like, you know, it's okay because it's the natural cycle or whatever. 
The other thing is like, you know, killing predators is bad because, you know, like all these bad things will happen in the future. Environment, lions, we've been culturally conditioned like, you know, the lions. Okay, you like know a- what? I, I think I might have something. Okay. I mean, um, you're basically going by a probability. Um, a lion or tiger in the wilderness or like the hypothetical xenomorph. Um, uh-huh. Since, okay, so since they prey on, an, on numerous different animals, like a lion might kill a gazelle or might kill some other uh-huh. smaller animal that it can get a hold of. I know tigers prey on a number of different animals like peacocks uh-huh. and shit. Okay. Um, a human being, especially for tigers, I know lions don't really preferentially hunt humans, but I know tigers will actually go after humans for food. Um, There is a possibility that a lion or tiger might go its entire life without ever even attempting to prey upon a human. Mm. So... Well, that's fine. Um, That's fine. I'm not saying... the, The issue is not that the tiger is going to prey upon the human. Um, the issue is that in the ti- look in the tiger's in the tiger's entire existence, it's going to almost certainly kill a herbivore. Is is my concern? It's almost certainly going to kill a sentient being that is not going to um, eat other sentient beings. Well, there may be incidental accounts that are similar to the crop death context, like if an insect, which we don't know is sentient, may be incidentally eaten by a you know, a, a herbivore or whatnot, but I'm not talking about that. The point is that the concern is that the there is going to be a case, almost guaranteed, whether it's a lion or a tiger or whatever predator, that they're going to basically be guaranteed to eat a herbivore that is going to be sentient, and they're going to probably eat it a lot. Um, right. So okay. I okay, just don't. Wait. Think, yeah. So okay. So would this moral principle apply to omnivorous animals that could actually potentially survive without ever eating meat? But chances are, throughout their lifetime, they would. It wouldn't because I don't see that as different than the crop death context. Okay. Yeah, I don't see a meaningful differentiator between like you know, let's say hypothetically, we don't even, we don't know that insects are sentient, but if they were sentient, one could say, oh. But what about, you know, a, a gazelle that would, you know, eat an insect when it's eating plants? Like, okay, first of all, like, there's so many problems with that. Like, number one, we don't know they're sentient. Number two, I, I mean, really, the biggest issue is I don't see a meaningful differentiator between that and the crop death context that we already accept as being okay in the vegan context. Um, and the degree, you can talk about degree of sentience and all those things. But the main issue here is that it's almost guaranteed that a lion is going to be eating a sentient herbivore and probably eating it alive and probably eating multiple. Same thing with a tiger. And I'm just asking for the trait difference between those sentient uh, herbivores and us such that it no longer is okay to act and idealize self-defense. Okay, so I, I just had one thought. Um... Mm-hmm. One way to sort of justify this would be like um, kind of Thanos' idea of preventing scarcity, where, you know, he killed half of everything so that there's more resources. Mm-hmm. One justification I could see is maybe letting certain predators live because if they weren't there, it would create so much resource scarcity that it would kill off another population. That it would wait. That it would create so much resource scarcity that it would kill off another population. Yeah, of it would kill off another population of animals. Okay, how does this not apply to the human context with the xenomorph? Like, it it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Argument? That's what I like. It, I I know it wouldn't. Like that wouldn't justify us killing xenomorph. Like it, like I guess you could say it would have Why to depend not? on whether or not. Well, no, it it would depend on whether or not that would actually be a reality if you. Yeah, um, but it would depend on whether or not that would be a reality in this case also. Like you'd have yeah, to no. actually go through the empirics and actually demonstrate that. Well, actually, you know, this would actually happen. Um, in it would not happen to human. Like let's just say. I mean, I'll just let's. Let's use the hypothetical case where, you know, let's say it was an, let's say the most resource scarce area where humans are already starving, like Africa. You know, there's a great deal of childhood starvation in Africa already as it stands. 
let's say there was an African xenomorph that would just kill Africans, right? Um, now, you know, if you could make, I don't see why you couldn't make that argument for the xenomorphs. Like, okay, if the xenomorphs are killing the African population, they're keeping them under control, it's already a resource scarce area. Why wouldn't we think that if we didn't kill the xenomorphs, that you know the same thing wouldn't happen, or couldn't, or wouldn't, or be you know less likely to happen than if we killed predators in the wild. Well, yeah, you'd have to use some sort of like empirical evidence to prove yeah. that, but that was just one uh, justification I thought of. Yeah, but th without the empirical evidence, the justification wouldn't really, yeah, no. wouldn't really hold. And you'd actually have to be comfortable with that sort of thing being a justification. Um, with humans, like in other words, if it, this were true of humans, like then I'm okay with like letting predators just mop the floor with humans. That's something you would have to be comfortable with. Yeah. What are you watching in the background? Oh, I'm playing. Uh, I'm I'm raiding. I'm 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 playing World of Warcraft right now. Oh, I see. Sorry, I can turn the volume off if you want. You, if if you just put it down lower, yeah. that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. I'll do that right now. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking of some other thing. Like, um, hmm. I mean, there is an absolute guarantee that a, a certain amount of human beings will end up killing other human beings. Wouldn't that like same sort of you know principle of killing predators apply to humans as well that you have? Well, notice that that's different because there's a guarantee. I agree, there's a guarantee that some amount of human beings will kill another amount of human beings. But if you point to any individual human, it's not the case that there's a virtual guarantee or almost a guarantee that that. that individual human will kill another human, which is the case with the lion or the tiger. In other words, the probability is so high that you can single out any human out there, and it's you're almost certainly going to be the case that they're not going to kill another human. Whereas in the case with lions and tigers, you could single out any individual lion and tiger, and it is the case that they're going to kill a sentient herbivore in their life. Okay, well, wait... That would apply to humans, then. No, you wait. Like no. all throughout human history, we've we've been killing herbivores. Wait, wait. I just want to see if you appreciate the difference. So I'm talking about taking any like you say you have a population of humans. Say sure. you were to randomly sample one individual human and you were asked the following question: For this specific human, is it almost a guarantee they're going that this specific human will kill another human in their life in the future? No, but you you also include let included non-human animals in this. Yeah, so for non-human, yeah, so for non-human animals, for a predator, right? Let's say if, if you sing, have a population of predators and ask the same question. So you, the answer is no for the human context. Now let's take the lion context. Well, let's wait, say in the wait, most humans eat meat. Okay, so we can we'll get to that. that's very good. Yes, we'll get to that. Um, so in principle, yes, in principle, I do think the same thing would apply to humans, but there are too many pragmatic concerns that really wouldn't be in the lion case to be to, to, uh, <laughs> to, to, that we really wouldn't exist in the lion case that would make an ethical difference. And we can get into that. So yes, I'm hypothetical, but let's, let's make it simple for the hypothetical. Let's say like we're dealing with a vegan population. Hypothetically, we can get to the real world. We can get to like, okay, well, what do we do about the humans that are actual like meat eaters? But hypothetically, let's just say that we're dealing with a vegan population. There, okay. there, is a, there is a difference here between, you know, looking at each individual human and looking at each individual lion. If you look at each individual human, it's not the case that they're going to kill another sentient being in this manner. Um, almost certainly not, um, although some amount of humans will. But in the lion case, almost if you could single out almost each individual lion, then it's almost a guarantee that that's going to happen. Sure, I'd grant that. Okay, so then in the this in this hypothetical where humans are, you know, we live in a vegan world, right? The question is, should we be killing, or would it be at least neutral, if not morally good, to kill predators?
Yeah, it would be at least morally neutral. Okay. All right. Morally neutral, if not morally good. I think it would be morally good. But anyway. Um, okay. So now in the case where, um, look, I mean, in the case where humans are eating meat, um, they're, yeah. So in principle, I, th I would say the same thing, but there are too many pragmatics. So number one, like, you know, we would not survive. Like vegans would be jailed. Vegans would be, uh, they would be put in jail. They would be, um, people would probably start killing vegans even. Um, it's not a fight we're going to win. Um, also, it's just, it, it, also, and if, if that happens, you're just going to let the animal agriculture industry continue for longer than that. Um, because there wouldn't be vegans to advocate for any of this. And it would just create far more, greater suffering um, because we wouldn't be there to, all. The, in other words, all the accomplishments we've been, done, we've been doing um, wouldn't be there anymore. And there's no clear, clear case that that's, all those things are true in the animal context. Uh, in the by killing predators, um, maybe there are certain laws that we kill in jail, but there are certain there are certainly cases where we can kill predators where that we're not going to be arrested and we're not going to be looked at as these completely horrible people, and we're not going to undo all the good that we did. And so there's a clear symmetry breaker in the case with humans that are just eating meat, um, such as the pragmatics really wouldn't make it the case that it would be ethical to kill them. Although in a vacuum, I will grant it. In a vacuum, you know, if a human's going to go over and shoot another sentient being, I do accept idealized self-defense in that case, in a vacuum hypothetical. Um, and if someone doesn't think that's the case, then, you know, name the trait with the human killing another human. Did I did I cut out or No, no, I'm just thinking. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, I think we have um like this idea of fairness that, you know, since these animals are in a situation where they have no other choice and um I think we're especially sympathetic because they don't typically prey upon us that um, we're kind of sympathetic to the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why, why shouldn't, I think we should be a little more sympathetic to the, you know, the deer and the Cape Buffalo that don't want to have their intestines ripped out of their bellies all, while they're alive. And, you know, don't want to have their. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I know uh, Richard Dawkins has kind of mentioned this a little bit. Um, he, he kind of has a similar argument where he's mentioned like, you know, we think we are, we deserve to live, but you know, a lot of people think it's fine to kill and eat animals. Like where in our evolutionary history was it okay to kill and eat us? Like at one point we were basically rats or something mm -hmm. similar. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I could kind of use that. Like, th one reason we're, he like we're, we're humans is because we were actually preyed upon by predators, and we got to this uh, level of intelligence because we were preyed upon. Like, do you think that could maybe be used as a justification to just u leave wild animals alone? I don't think so. Um, no. <laughs> no, it's just descriptive. Um, so yeah, so like, let's, even if it was the, I mean, look, you, a carnist can make that same argument for like eating meat, wouldn't they? Like, okay, like, you know, one of the reasons we got here so smart was because that, you know, we went through all this history and, you know, we made use of all the food we have, including eating meat. Um, even though we don't need to eat meat right now, um, this happens in our evolutionary past and that's the reason we're here today. And so why can't we eat meat now? Um, what's the difference between that and someone saying like, oh, you know, I'm, I don't even know, like, I'm sorry, what was the the justification for killing? So, so I'm saying the reason we're human today and we are the way we are, like the mm -hmm. reason we're this intelligent and everything is because we had predators that preyed upon us and uh -huh. this whole symbiotic relationship, it created the beings we we are today okay. i don't think you could technically call it symbiotic but you know what i mean oh, so why not why not um accept human accept the xenomorphs hmm. 
Um, I would argue, I guess, in that case, the xenomorphs wouldn't really help us achieve a higher level of, I don't know, cognitive ability or anything if we just let them kill us. Uh, so lions, I guess that would be. Lions don't oh, let the lions. The lions aren't aren't doing that either. The lions aren't helping like other animals have a higher level of cognitive ability or fitness. Oh, maybe, maybe, um, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, I actually, I'm actually agnostic on that. Um, and I would actually be agnostic on the xenomorphs too. Um, actually, now that I think about it, yeah, it, may, it could very well be that the xenomorphs are helping us achieve a higher cognitive level of fitness evolutionarily. Maybe we are going to evolve like smarter brains to avoid the xenomorphs and try to run away from them, try to detect them more, just like a gazelle, you know, may. Well, I mean. Well, I mean, we we already are smart enough, smarter than them. Like, I mean, we could you know, shoot maybe them we'll be from more, a mile away with a sniper rifle. Yeah, maybe we'll be even. Maybe we'll be even smarter. Maybe they'll evolve to be smarter with us, and so we'll continually evolve to be smarter as you know, you know, more humans get eaten alive. I mean, all this is very speculative, and it requires a lot of like empirical data to support like a differentiator between the gazelle and the maybe the gazelles are being affected just as much as the humans. Are. Um, Maybe in terms of their evolutionary increase in smartness. I don't know. I don't think you know either. I don't think anyone knows the answer to that. Hmm. Just trying to think of other sort of avenues to take this. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I'm kind of stuck. Well, you don't have to be stuck, Richard. You could just accept the you could just accept the position. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's I don't know. There's just a weird gut feeling. I know. You know uh, I know, uh, Richard. I know. It's very weird. It's because we're yeah, culturally I, raised our lives. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I, I mean, I think I'd say right now, um, the only argument I'd have against killing uh, wild carnivorous animals would be um, potentially if the ecological consequences could be so great that it would actually end up harming us and causing more human deaths. That's the only real yeah. argument I could think of. Yeah, but of course, the same thing applies to the xenomorph. Yeah, um, I'd accept that. I, I would say if the ecological consequences would be so great that it would actually end up harming us, mm -hmm. that it could be uh, justifiable. And I mean, if there were a case where there were some predator that only preyed upon one specific species, if removing that predator would actually end up causing more suffering and death to that species that's preyed upon, I'd say it's unjustifiable to, to kill that particular predator. Yeah, sure. I mean, you and the same thing presumably would apply in the xenomorph context. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I think that's the only the, position I have the, right but now. But here's the but here but wait but but that doesn't like get you where to, you want to go. Like you actually yeah, no. have to make the case like that. You know, in the lion context, like if we remove the twenty thousand lions, you know, that the ecological consequences would just be so great, far greater than all the herbivores that those twenty thousand lions would eat alive. Um, but the xenomorphs, like, no, like they, we, you know, the consequences would just, the utilitarian calculus would just work out such that the consequences would be not as great. Um, like that's an empirical case that would really need to be, if one wants to take a utilitarian view on this, um, I think pure utilitarianism is insane, but even if one wants to be a pure utilitarian, they would, they have all the work ahead of them to actually make this justification go through. Wait, can you repeat that again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you can't just uh, so in order to make the justification go through, you can't just assert that it would be the case uh, or that it is the case that you know if it would be the case, um, then it would go through. Sure, I grant that on utilitarianism. I, but I just have actually, to prove. It. Yeah, you actually have to show that the empirics actually work out that way. That in the case of the twenty thousand lions eating the gazelle, that you know, the environmental or whatever extern external downstream consequences would be so great 
um, that it would outweigh whatever amount of suffering would be caused by those lions eating the herbivores alive. But in the case of the xenomorphs eating the humans alive, eating these uh, in a vegan world, in the case of the xenomorphs eating the humans alive in this vegan world, then it would not be the case that the uh, consequences would outscale or, or the, the consequences would be greater. That's, a, that's an empirical case that you actually have to make for that justification to go through. And if sure. you're not able to do that, then you'd just be agnostic. Be like, okay. okay, maybe it's just morally neutral to kill the, to kill the lion. Well, okay, sure. Like, I, I can grant that for now. Yeah. Okay. Like, um, if the data did not exist, yeah. like, uh, Would you, you wouldn't... If the okay, data... so if the data didn't exist, you'd be still in favor of killing the xenomorphs. You <laughs> wouldn't like my, take a... Yeah. You, you wouldn't take a neutral position. Let's just leave it alone until the data is... Yeah, I mean, just the same way if, if someone's going to kill... If a human's going to kill another human. Like, if a mentally handicapped human's going to kill another mentally handicapped human and eat them alive, you know, my my position would be, okay, well, yeah, I'm not going to be there saying, like, oh, well, maybe, I don't know. Like, yes, it looks really bad that this human's going to eat another human alive, but maybe there's some utilitarian calculus downstream that would take that would happen such that, you know, somehow along the way you know god works in mysterious ways or whatever I, I i'm being facetious but somehow along the way that there would be like more harm done by just having another human in the world um so let's not like let's just sit there and watch while the human gets eaten alive like no that's not i don't i couldn't see myself taking that position unless like the data really actually showed that because you could by the way if you want to and if you want to say that i don't see why you wouldn't grant like people hunting uh, invasive species um, because they can make the same argument. They can say, okay, well, yes, I'm hunting an invasive species and I'm eating their flesh, but look at what's going to happen if I don't hunt them. There's going to be all these ecological downstream consequences. And if they can't prove the data, they can just say, well, I don't know. The data doesn't exist. Why wouldn't you at least be agnostic about what I'm doing? Why wouldn't you at least say what I'm doing is morally neutral if I'm hunting invasive species and eating their flesh? Like, why would you take a vegan position? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I would require a very strong degree of empirical, um, if someone wants to make the case that, you know, if we didn't kill invasive species, um, that, that there would be uh, these downstream consequences that would just be so great. I, I actually expect them to provide evidence for that, and I expect them to make a strong case for that. I'm not just going to... Sure. And if they can't, I'm not going to just be like, oh, well, I guess what you're doing is morally neutral. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I... yeah, I think... Uh... Yeah, I think right now, then, I agree with your position, then, for the most part. All right, cool story. Hey, good talking to you, Richard. And let yeah, no me problem. know if you have anything else. Yeah. Um, See, Richard sounds yeah, we were like gonna me have right that now. You, you sound exactly how I sounded after talking to him about this, which is just, like, just like defeated. Like, why do we have to take this damn attitude towards uh, lions? But I was in the same place. I was just like, I don't know, really, what else I can say to this. Yeah, I, I just have to think about it more. I can't really think of anything else. Um, yeah, if you come back with the answer and defeat Avi, I'll be, uh, be very happy. Because I have an intuitive yeah. bias towards lions also. Yeah, and um, whenever you want to have that abortion debate. Oh, yeah. We, we have to do a data exchange uh, first, so I'll have to get the data ready for you. Um, yeah, sure. Um, I saw some papers, of the... Papers. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry? Well, I saw uh, some of the stuff you posted about uh, fetal sentience. Yeah, yeah, most of this, I think most of the papers you're probably aware of. Because um, uh, most of the papers are papers that actually, the, some of the papers I'll be sending are papers that you've actually used in abortion debates. Um, like the, which paper was that? It's, I think I've uh, only relied on two. There was one about pain and... Yeah. It, it's technically different than sentience. I mean, you could have sentience without pain, like the ability yeah. to perceive pain. Um, I I use that kind of as a supplementary thing because some people bring up pain specifically. Oh, when is and, the capacity uh, for sentience acquired? That's the one. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's one I've, I've seen used. But yeah, um, so that's one. Um, and then I'm just going to have to send you like a, some, a lot of... Uh, E EEG data, um, and let's see. Oh, and then there's some embryo embryology data, 
and comparative anatomy data that I'll be sending you. I do have okay, stuff sure. on my plate though, even though I'm playing World of Warcraft right now. Um, I have like a, actually have a Holocaust debate set up with Mike Enoch and Eric Stryker. Um, so there's like high impact debates that I like to do one at a time, like the anti-vaccination debate. Um, the reason there I call them high impact debates is because there are um, either a lot relying on the debate or there's like a lot, um, like if I lose the debate, then I actually do believe people are going to die or sentient beings are going to die. Like the, the anti-vaccination debate is one of them. Um, I consider the Holocaust debate one of them. And then of course the abortion Holocaust, you know, that's one of them as well. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll make it happen though. But uh, do patient with. And uh, in the meantime, do let me know if you have any answer to um, the uh, predator thing. Avi, when are you debating Stryker and Eno? That doesn't have a fixed status as well. I'm, it's going to be a 2v2. Um, it's going to be myself and a uh, master's PhD candidate in history versus uh, Mike Stryker. Uh, and oh, sorry, Eric Stryker and Mike Enoch. Uh, what uh, what points are you going to argue? If... What? What? Are you going to like argue historical points, or are you going to argue like some kind of moral? No, I I will be taking um, the PhD candidate in history will be arguing the historical points. I will be making the empirical points. I'll be arguing like the forensic evidence and whatnot. Ah, uh, okay. Like how many like bodies were at this place at this time or something? Like yeah, like or cyanide data, which I've seen them talk about, and they're like hilariously insane. Like just, uh, I've, yeah. I've seen them talk about like the yeah, like Rudolph and. Uh, and Leuster and Ball and Matanyo and all those, all the, and, and Marco and their criticisms of Markowitz and all that. 